In this video and the next few videos, I want to talk a little bit about how you can use the heat equations to solve word problems in chemistry class. Um, there's a little bit of chemistry information, but mostly it's just applying math knowledge that you picked up along the way. Uh, and it's also using this phenomenally large 12 page book uh, filled with equations and other useful pieces of information. So the first thing I want to do in this video is take that 12 pages of information and just write down the pieces of information we're going to need to know on a little slip of paper that's going to skip me through these problems. All right, so looking at the reference table, first thing we want to do is we want to go all the way to the back and look at what the heat equations are. All right, and so I'm going to make myself a nice little reference table that I can slide into and out of my notebook whenever I need to solve problems like this. I'm going to write down the equations and then I might write down some extra notes that are going to help me remember this, you know, giving a little message to future me because I think future me might forget something important here. All right, so we have Q is equal to M times capital C times delta T. All right, so Q, this is heat. We measure heat in joules. We've got M, and M is the mass. All of the things we're going to be doing in these problems are going to be about liquid water. So this is the mass of the water, and we measure that in grams. Then we've got delta T. Delta T is talking about the change in temperature. So we're either heating the water up or we're cooling it down. And we measure temperature mostly in Kelvin, but we can also think about it as degrees Celsius because we're just talking about heating something up by 10 degrees. We can either talk about raising it 10 Kelvin or 10 degrees Celsius. It's the same amount of temperature change because those two scales have the same uh, size between them. And then C is what we call the specific heat capacity. which is just talking something special about the way that liquid water behaves when you heat it up. All right, and so we're going to look at the front of the table and we're going to see that the specific heat capacity of water liquid is 4.8 joules per gram Kelvin. All right, so that's measured in joules per gram Kelvin. All right, so that is the heat equation when you're heating water or cooling water. There are two more equations here. There's Q is equal to M times HF. So here, HF is the heat of fusion. And so we use this when we're talking about liquid water turning into ice or ice turning into liquid water, but it's staying at zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so zero degrees Celsius for our water, there's a specific amount of heat that is involved in that. So let me say water to or from ice. And then the last equation is Q is equal to mass times the heat of vaporization. Heat of vaporization. And vaporization, this is talking about when water turns to ice and vice versa. What do you think vaporization would be? Well, that's when water goes back and forth between becoming it and becoming steam. Again, that stays at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, and so let me also write down all of these constants for water. All right, so the heat of fusion, the heat of fusion is equal to 334 joules per gram. The heat of vaporization is equal to 2,260 joules per gram. 
And the specific heat capacity, like we said before, of water is 4.18 joules per gram Kelvin. OK, so now that I've got this piece of paper explaining to me what all of these equations are for, now I can kind of take this whole big thing and put it aside. And now I can just use my little scrap of paper to help me solve the equations that we're going to look at over the next couple of videos.